rich Italian culture, some amazing food, gelato, pizza, great people, and probably some of the best Italian beaches that I've been on. I've just spent the last four days in this incredible Italian island, Ischia. It is a hidden gem and it is somewhere that you absolutely have to add to your travel list. You can use this video to help plan your upcoming trip or you can follow these tips directly. My name is Matt, I'm a travel content creator and I post weekly videos all about my travels around the world. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification so you get notified for the weekly uploads. Let's get into it. First off on the list, Castello Aragonese. It's a castle off the coast of Ischia Ponte and it is so, so grandiose. It was constructed over 2000 years ago, 474 BC, and it's gone really well developed. And that's because over the years, due to volcanic eruptions, a lot of the locals actually had to move to that little island and build it up. There's actually a total of around seven churches there now, the nuns houses, the olive garden, and it's actually a really well organized castle tour. When you pay for the entry, it takes you around to all the different spots so you'll not miss out any of the essential sites. You're gonna see some of the old historical ways of torturing. There was a guillotine there which was a little bit eerie to see but some of the best views that you will actually see in the whole of Ischia come from this castle. There's actually two cafes. One that gives you some of the most incredible views of the neighboring islands of Capri, Naples and the Amalfi Coast. We literally just had a cappuccino on the rooftop and it was unbelievable. But then if that cafe is not good enough for you, there is another one that faces in the direction of Ischia Ponte and you can see the fisherman's water, which is where all of the locals love to go for a swim, just to cool down after wandering around the castle. Can highly suggest visiting this castle. It's gonna take you around three hours. I'd probably suggest doing it first thing in the morning or in the evening if you're coming in peak season when it's super, super hot. But then after you've done the castle, it's a really good idea to actually just have a wander through Ischia Ponte. It's a beautiful local village with loads of local shops. You've got some great gelato there. And there's also some really nice restaurant cafes. We had probably one of the best pizzas on the island in Perozzi and the restaurant was full of Italians. It was a lovely restaurant, great pizza. That was just an amazing, amazing day out. If you only have one day in Ischia, this is definitely a must, must visit because you're gonna get a real feel for the culture in Ischia. You're gonna see the most essential tourist hotspot and you're gonna see some incredible views and get to bathe in some incredible waters. So that is travel tip number one, Castello Aragonese. Number two, Sant'Angelo. This is a beautiful Italian village. We actually spent our first full day here in Ischia. We hired a sun lounger. That comes with Wi-Fi, changing rooms, a toilet, and a shower. You have to do it through one of these private people that are selling them. But this is just an amazing, amazing place to just relax, spend a full day there. We hired a paddle boat with a little slide on it, which was so much fun. So it was very nice to just get one of the boats and just get some peace away from the chaotic nature of the beach. But that's one thing about Ischia, it's not really the place to come if you're looking for a quiet, untouched beach with anybody else on it. Ischia is actually very busy. Many of the people from mainland Italy will actually come for their weekend break just to enjoy their summer holidays. In my opinion, it doesn't actually take away from the experience that you get on these beaches. The beaches are still absolutely beautiful and a real amazing experience. The incredible crystal clear water of the Mediterranean Sea, like bath water here. It's not cold at all, but it's still super refreshing. Sant'Angelo is a beautiful, beautiful area to just wander through, go for a swim, have a wander through the marina, sit in one of the cafes, Cafes, enjoy an Aperol spritz, enjoy a glass of nice white wine. We actually went to a restaurant called Neptunas. We had a lovely Italian meal, really, really good restaurant, great food, not too expensive. And there's also some great gelatarias, which of course it would be rude not to go to. But also what's great in Italy is you will find a lot of these water filling stations. So if you have a bottle, you can refill your water. I would definitely suggest spending a full day at Sant'Angelo and really get a feel for this sleepy island Ischia. Travel tip number three, Poseidon Thermal Baths. I'm actually on Poseidon Thermal Baths' private beach right now. It's just an amazing, amazing day out. They've actually organized it into a full sort of spa therapeutic experience. You're meant to start with a wave massage in the sea. So you go for like a 15 minute bathe in the water. 
and then you move on to the Turkish style baths where you sit in there for like 15 minutes and then jump into the freezing cold plunge pool. And the idea is you're meant to work your way up the 20 different thermal baths that gradually increase in temperature and you spend a decreasing amount of time in each of these baths. So you actually, by the end of it, if you do it properly, feel the massive beneficial effects. I personally felt super energized at the end of thermal baths and it's just an amazing, amazing experience. And all of the locals actually come here. This isn't just a tourist place. It's completely natural. The way that they heat the pools is through the thermal springs underground. The highlight for me was actually waiting right at the end of the day at 6.30 p.m. where everybody was leaving and I just led in the freezing cold plunge pool for a good half an hour, just meditating almost and just soaking it all in. It was so relaxing, so tranquil and so, so peaceful. Now the price of the Poseidon Thermal Bath does vary throughout the day. If you come first thing in the morning, I think it's about 38 euros for the full day. If you go from 4 p.m. onwards, I think it's about 27 euros. We actually went at around 5 p.m. We did feel a little bit on the rushed side, so I would say if you just wanna go for the therapeutic spa experience, you can have a good time just going at 4 p.m. If you're using the thermal baths, you do have to wear one of their caps that you've got to purchase for two euros 50. And also if you want to use the lockers, you have to pay a euro every single time you want to open it. So definitely bring a beach bag with all your things in it. Genuinely, I've got to say that these Poseidon thermal baths was my favorite thing to do here in Ischia. Number four on that list is the Giardini La Mortella Botanical Gardens. These were originally created by British composer William Walton's wife, Susanna Walton, who was an Argentinian lady. To be honest, it's like a three hour thing for you just to meander through, take in the beautiful nature. You're gonna see different vegetation, trees, plants from different places all around the world, from South America, South Africa, Australia, Asia and it is just a really nice way to break up your trip from authentic Italian culture, amazing beaches, food, to just go and experience something really in nature. It was about 12 euros to enter and there's a lovely cafe there as well if you want to enjoy a nice coffee, a nice refreshing drink to break up your trip. I actually saw like this lily pad that was 40 centimeters in length, the biggest lily pad I've ever seen in my life. And also if you actually want to experience some of William Walton's music, they do performances every week. It's in their outdoor theater and they also have an indoor theater. So you can actually check online if you want to hear William Walton's music they do do live performances on site and last of all the travel tip number five hiring the electric bicycles personally i believe this is the best way to get around the island the freedom that you have by being on these electric bicycles being able to move at your own pace go to wherever you want to go you're not limited by public transport and also you feel like you're getting a little bit of exercise these electric bicycles can get up any hill there's no extremely steep hill that it cannot get up the battery life is more than suitable we made a full trip over to the castello there and back from the hotel ideal which was probably a total of like 20 miles and it had no problem. Well, a lot of other people do suggest getting around the island of Ischia on a Vespa or a scooter, but for those that don't necessarily feel as confident and they want a more safer option, the electric bicycle is definitely a good idea. You can hire these from many different shops. You'll actually see them scattered all over the island. Just ask the hotel staff where the best place is to hire one of these scooters. We actually hired it from our hotel and we just picked it up from reception. We were paying around 30 euros per person per day. It came with the lock. We had no problem just tying it up to any railings whenever we got somewhere. Ischia does have a really good transport system. If you do want to get the local buses, you can do that. But bear in mind, because it is very busy and busy season, you're not going to be sat down. You're going to be cramped up on these buses. Of course, with the local transport, you are only going to be paying maybe one euro fifty for one journey. But I personally can't put a value on that comfort of my own space and having my own freedom of being on a bike and knowing that I can go wherever I want to, whenever I want to. 
that is my list of the top five things that you must do and slash travel tips for when you come to Ischia. So I really, really hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel if you're not already and hit the bell notification button so you get notified for the weekly uploads. And also go follow my Instagram because I post lots of stories on there of my travels and you'll see a lot of clips of the places that I go to before they actually come onto this YouTube channel. But also check out this playlist here if you want to check out more from the Ischia series, more of the in-depth of what I got up to on a day-to-day -day basis. But as always, that is it and I'll see you in the next one.